It's the Fellowship of the Geek Show, a weekly podcast about comics, the comic book industry, and other geek pop culture. Music courtesy of Manny the Martyr. And now, on with the show! Hey everybody! It's the Fellowship of the Geeks podcast. My name is Thomas Chick, and joining me for this episode is Mike Marlowe. Hey, gang. And Les Webster. Cool. How are you guys doing? Pretty good. Not bad. You? Doing okay. I hope everybody out there is having a good week so far. So what's been going on in your corner of the galaxy? Well, I finished watching that Lovecraft documentary I was talking about last week. And it was funny because the further along I got in it, the more sure I was was that I had seen it. So, but it was still good. It was a good one because they actually talked about kind of the connection between the writing and the person. But anyway, um, then I stumbled across another documentary on YouTube that was about an hour and a half long. But this one was not about Lovecraft. No, this one was about Blackadder. And I know I have mentioned Blackadder before, but if you have Mm. not seen it, it is a hoot. Um, It ran a total of 24 episodes in England between 83 and 89, plus a couple of specials. Plus, there was a Christmas special, and then there was another special they did. Like, I want to say... In 99 or 2000 or something like that it was several years later but yeah it's and it's it's a historical comedy and yes I pronounced that correctly it was historical as in each season each six episode season is set in a different time period in British history with the exploits of Blackadder and his cronies who are mostly idiots but it's a lot of fun and the the documentary was good too. Cool. That does sound cool. Alrighty. Wes. I am just about to finish up my fourth Doc Savage novel in the past week. They are easy reads, but they are so enjoyable to go back and, and think of the time frame at which they were written. So that's been my main concern this past week, and I'm all ready to pick up another one here in probably a day. Cool. Yeah, when were, cool, those, cool. Ri- when were those written? Uh, they started in the mid-30s okay. and lasted till uh, mid to late 40s, I believe. Cool. Yeah, I remember reading one as a kid, and it was pretty cool. I just, I kind of never, I didn't get into it terribly, but it was, I remember it being, I remember enjoying it. I want to say I read it more than once. Well, they've come out, I think it's Spectrum Books that does it, that uh, they give you two novels per issue. And a, a novel is about 60 to, between 60 and 70 pages. Yeah. Uh, and not like a paperback, but a, probably a magazine size book so it's really good stuff it's fun to read well so when you say you've read four novels have you read four novels or have you read four of those which would be eight novels i have read uh, four novels two books <laughs> just trying to make it complicated Her question. and you succeeded yep Woo-hoo. i'm good at that for me, it's been kind of a quiet week. God, uh, I used to remember what those were like. Mm. Uh, I mean, just working on odds and ends, nothing really kind of big, so nothing, nothing to write home about. All righty. So, uh, so the old typical big bag of nothing this week. Huh? Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I, I was due for one of those one of these days. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Anything else before we head move on? Nope. Okay. Lead on, McDuff. 
Okay. Uh, before we get into this week's topics, I uh, wanted to give a shout out to our sponsors, the sponsors of the fellowship. Thanking them for their support. Start off with uh, Make Mine Indie. If you're not aware of it, it's a digital uh, catalog of independent titles. If you go to our website, www.thefellowshipofthegeeks.net, and click on our sponsors page, you will see a link to go to their website, and you can download the most recent uh, catalog, which is Winter. And we should be getting the spring here real soon because the deadline for admissions just passed. So about another month or two, we'll get a we'll get spring catalog. If they're consistent, cool. it will be the first day of spring. Yeah, that's true. So in about another five six weeks. There we go. But the winter catalog is about 138 pages. Uh, in addition to titles. There are interviews, there's some reviews, there's previews, uh, some really good books that you may not be aware of, that we were not aware of until this came along. So we definitely recommend you checking it out, and uh, you never know, you might find something that you'll definitely want to check out, because these are books that are, if, if I'm understanding correctly, that are not available to normal distributors, so... You actually have to be dealing with uh, with the publisher themselves, which is cool. We want to thank them for their support. Uh, we also want to thank Things from Another World, a proud sponsor of the fellowship. Got some good deals going on right now. Of course, they have their evergreen specials of forty uh, percent off the sale on comics, statues, toys, and merchandise. Thirty uh, percent off pre-selected pre-order manga titles and 50% off Nick and Dent books. But uh, the sale they got currently going on till the end of February is dollar back issues. So while you're on our sponsors page, just scroll down to the bottom, click on one of the images, uh, and I'll take you over to Things from Another World. That lets them know that uh, we sent you their way, and take advantage of some of these great deals. Yeah, Tally back issues. Come on, that's awesome. Yep, that's pretty good. That's it's hard to uh, hard to beat that. Mm-hmm. Okay, for this week, we decided to celebrate Valentine's Day because this will be coming out the week of Valentine's. Mm-hmm. So happy Heart Day, everybody! Mm-hmm. But give, we give figured, your sweeties, a big old kiss from us. Because that's not creepy or anything. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so we thought just for fun, uh, kind of just give a list of our favorite couples. And not just in comics, but it could be in novels, TV shows, movies, even open it up to real life. So just we decided to name a couple of our favorite couples and i believe mike is leading off i believe you're right um and being the indie homer that i am i'm going to lead off with a very popular image couple which would be alana and marco from saga they are a couple of what you might call star-crossed lovers in a sort of romeo and juliet except total badasses sort of way um they are they were soldiers on either side of a never-ending war um, but managed to find love and also make a baby um, which was heretofore thought impossible or at least they were told by both of their governments that it was not possible to do that but they did it anyway and, and they're being, like I said, both being in their respective government's militaries, they both had to go AWOL. Um, and so they're the, the entire, this, this was pretty much issue one. So the entire series, which is in the high 40s at this point, has been them running from the authorities, basically. Trying to figure out a way to find a place to hide and raise their kid. Awesome. 
Well, that's a good choice. Yeah. Honestly, I'm not surprised of that choice, but yeah, that's a good one. It's definitely a good one. <laughs> I'm so predictable. Well, I know you're a big fan of Saga, so it kind of makes sense. Mm-hmm. I don't usually get into that kind of soap opera-y, Romeo and Juliet-esque thing, but there's a lot more going on in those books, and it's there's a lot of stuff that's a lot of fun. And eventually you can get hooked into the soap opera story, mm-hmm. including the point at which um, Alana became a soap opera star in the story. But anyway, that was fun. All righty. Good choice. Uh, Les, you're up. First one I'm looking at is Hawkman and Hawk Girl. They have done numerous versions, and I guess the the romantic one is the version where they return, they reincarnate, and are lovers once again. They were put to death by a priest, and he, uh, he killed them with a knife made of in metal, which is key to the um, hot man, hot girl mythos. Each time they come around, they meet once again and are together until one dies. Uh, then the reincarnation begins again. It's uh, to me, it's it's got a lot of looks at it, and because of the reincarnation portion of it, I I find it fascinating. Of course, I when I first read Hawkman, it was in the '60s, and he was a Thanagarian policeman sent to Earth to track a villain. So the new version of reincarnation is is a bit uh, gives a different spin to it. But to me it's great fun to, to read. A cop story. Now I can't you, you mentioned that being a cop story and now I can't get the the picture of um Joe Friday with wings. <laughs> it's just uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's a bit different, yeah. That's... At least he's not Robert Crawford yelling 10-4. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's a good choice. I hadn't thought about them, but yeah, because they were faded. They were faded to be together, but... God, how many times have they died and reincarnated? But, yeah, that's a pretty cool choice. This is a little bit of a tangent, but... I've, okay. always, I've always thought calling them Hawkman and Hawk Girl was a little racist. I mean, they only call them that because they have wings and those helmets. Because they look like hawks. Because yeah, because they wear hawk-like. I just, I don't know. It's just, I mean, you'd think they could come up with a better name for them than that. I mean, it would definitely be a less descriptive name, but I don't know. It just seems, I don't know, too easy. Okay, I thought, I, thought, I thought you were going to say something about why they call her a girl when she's a woman, and they actually changed it at one time. Oh, there's no point in talking about the sexism that was around when they <laughs> created them. When did they create them? In the 50s or 60s? I mean, come on. Uh, the original Hawkman was back in the 40s. There you go. So, yeah. I mean, you get the same thing with Superman and Supergirl. Yeah. So, I mean, that's all over the place, and that's product of the time and yes it's sexist and yes they should change it when they can but I mean now they've got a bat girl and a bat woman yeah well, well the thing with like Supergirl there was, there was an age difference and I think that but they, yeah they could have called her Superwoman but, but that's they could have called her you know. Kara but anyway okay. that's again not a very descriptive title for a comic book right. but again, like I said tangent Sorry. that's alright okay my first choice was in comics, but originally appeared on TV. So my choice is Willow and Tara from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Aww. Aww. I like that. I got into the show rather late, but I really love the development of the 
for those who are, who've never watched the show, first of all, y'all need to go back and watch the show. Uh, but we'll get into that to a, a, another episode. But um, it just, you know, going back and watching the original, the earlier stuff where it was Willow and Oz, it just didn't seem right now as compared to uh, with Tara. And it, it may be just that I'm, I was colored, already prejudiced, but they they seem like they fit together. Uh, it, it just seemed like there was something about Tara that kind of, you, you see what I'm saying? They kind of... Uh, it was as if... I mean, honestly, probably the writing was just better at that point. That's a good point, because too. Because the Willow Oz thing was, what, season two? Yeah. And Willow and Terror was season six. And so the writing was... On an, on an individual episode basis, the writing was better. Um, I will admit... I literally stopped watching the show when Tara died. Yeah. It turned me off of the show. I was so pissed. That, and that you could, you could, you could say that's one of the few good things about season six. <laughs> it was honestly the only good thing about season six. Yeah. And it was yeah. like I said, really well written and really well done. And yeah, I was, that, that broke me. I, I, yeah. I have never watched a single episode of season seven because that happened to be, in the very last episode of season six, and I've never gone back. I actually quit watching Angel at the same time. I was so pissed. I was pissed at Joss Whedon, I guess. <laughs> yeah. He kind of made up for it with Avengers. But anyway, yeah, that, that's a really good choice. I, I didn't even think of that one. Yeah, it was just, it was just, you just kind of, you could see it. Now, granted, you, you talk about the, you talk about the writing, but the acting as well. Oh sure. That, that helped sell it, sell it, but you know, it was just man, it was just kind of it was nice because it just worked. It seemed really it's well. yeah, it worked. I mean, in the man, in around with everything else that's going on, all the chaotic stuff that's going on, there was like I don't know, there were kind of they were they you can say you they were at the heart during that period. Yeah, Tara, Tara, it, it worked because Tara understood Willow. Yeah. In, a, in a way that nobody else on the show ever really did. She just got it. I mean, she understood the witch thing. And Willow, that was when that was the point where Willow was figuring out the witch thing and learning. And Tara was a big part of that. And it just worked. The, I am definitely glad you picked that one because I didn't. It never even occurred to me. I don't. I was thinking. I was thinking in terms of comics. Very not very strictly because my stuff wanders off eventually. But oh. yeah, I it didn't. I didn't broaden my choices enough to come up with that one on my own. But I'm glad you did. I'm glad it got mentioned. Okay. Uh, well, you're up for your second choice then. Oh, I'm next. Okay. Um, so this is, <laughs> like I said, I'm, I varied off of I varied off course a little bit for this. So my second choice is actually kind of not a couple but kind of i think they are definitely connected um despite the fact that they really 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 fucking don't want to be um and i went with gert and larry from i hate fairyland if there was ever a homicidal old married couple in comics this is it um, these two would just soon shoot each other in the face with a bazooka than spend any more time together than they already have since they've been stuck together for 30 some odd years. Um, the fact that Gert is still after 30 some odd years stuck in the body of an eight year old girl and Larry is some sort of flying insect thing with a cigar stuck in his mouth doesn't matter because they're still just the prototype of a dysfunctional marriage right there. So that's that's why I picked them. Besides that, it's just fun as hell. I hate Fairyland. It's just an awesome book. <laughs> oh, I like the choice. Good good call. Yeah. I should have known you you would pick that one. But <laughs> but a good choice. It's a very good choice. Uh, Wes. Well, 
Speaking of the Kardashians, <laughs> no, uh, I don't know if anybody picked this, but Peter Parker and whoever. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, you got Betty Brandt, you got Gwen Stacy, you got Mary Jane. Uh, you got you the have, Venom costume. <laughs> you have Black Cat. It, it just seems like the man is destined not to have a true love. Peter Parker is a bit of a man whore now that you think about it. Good point. I have to agree with that. The boy doesn't know when to really stop. I mean, admittedly, he's had 50 years to kind of cycle through all of these chicks, but it's kind of a lot of, it's kind of a high head count for, for this. Yeah. I have to agree. He has a lot of love to give. <laughs> and a lot of tragedy to cope with. Well, yeah, it's, it's a dramatic title. Well, mm -hmm. titles. He loses one to a, a villain. He loses one to a person that decides to change time. He loses one because she just doesn't really dig him. Yep, they're at least semi-creative with, with how they do it. He definitely has difficulty hanging on to the ladies. <sighs> mm -hmm. Oh, well. My second choice, I go, I go back to comics, and they weren't really, really a couple, but I always thought it would be intriguing that if it, it actually went somewhere, and we saw it a little bit in comics, and it was definitely uh, kind of picked up a little bit in the animated series that was going on at the time. And I am talking about Batman and Wonder Woman. I always thought that, that this pairing was interesting. Uh, I, I still don't understand the whole... Well, I guess I do the whole thing of, well, you know, of Wonder Woman and Superman. That they should naturally be a couple because of their power and that kind of stuff. But it just seems like to me, that it, 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 at least with the way the New 52 was handled, the that Superman, yeah. But generally, the Kansas boy probably would not find Diana a, a, a type to be romantic with. But uh, there's just something, you know, I can see Diana be intrigued by Bruce, of him being just a mortal and doing everything he has done to be the way that he is. And I, I can see, I can see him respecting her and, you know, they're, they're both good looking characters. So, but something that's never really been ever been pushed to the point where they were actually having a relationship that I can recall. I mean, it was hinted at, and I think they may have had a date or two, but that's about it. You have to wonder yeah. when they have time, but that's true of a lot of the Justice League. Right. They're... And for some reason, although it was a, a natural fit for Superman Wonder Woman, I was never a fan of that idea. I would prefer a Batman Wonder Woman just to see what would transpire. I don't know. I, I think it's a I think it's a bad idea mixing business with pleasure. Yeah, that's a good point. Especially when business is on that scale, when it's saving the world business. just seems like a dangerous idea. I mean, I, I mean, we could go back to your pick, Les, and, and blame all of that, on, blame all the Spider-Man stuff on the fact that he's too busy saving the world to maintain a relationship. I mean, sure, DC and Marvel have their differences. They have different ways of approaching stories, but I mean, and this is just Spider-Man. I mean, how's that going to work with, with the Justice League, with Wonder Woman and Batman? They're on a different plane, on a different power scale, basically. I mean, they're saving the world. I mean, Spidey's having trouble getting it done 
at home when he's just saving the city. Bats and, <clears throat> Bats and Diana are saving the galaxy for crying out loud. I mean, how, how is yeah, that? They're, they're, they're in two different planes. Hers is the invisible jet. His is the bat plane. <laughs> just think, I was, you said invisible jet, and I went straight to, well, how in the hell are they going to hide and make out in that? <laughs> it, it's just not going to happen. It's, Everybody it's would wonders, see them. It's the wonders of the universe. But anyway. Well, if I can go and do a more serious note, I'm going to bring up another one of those, the spirit. One of those guys that ended up with a multitude of girls. And the one he was closest to was Ellen Dolan. And it, it kind of was around there. You just never knew what direction it was going to take. I found I find it interesting that a lot of those heroes of that kind of era and that style have that kind of unrequited love thing going on anyway. I mean, it sort of seems to be a staple of the of the genre, if, if you will. And I mean, obviously, the spirit started it, or was one of the ones that started it. But yeah, you got it. Just it, it's another one of those where. They just can't quite quit being a hero long enough to make a relationship work, sort of thing. Kind of like Spidey. True. Which is probably where they got that idea from for Spidey. But, it, yeah, I mean, and the, being dead probably didn't help either. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Residing in the cemetery. Insert random necrophilia joke here, but... Woohoo. Yeah. I'll, I'll spare the listeners a little bit, but but yeah, I can I can see it. Again, not all yeah. love stories have to be happy love stories. Right. Okay. Mike? Alright. I will jump back to what you were talking about, Tom. Okay. Uh, I'll pick Superman and Wonder Woman. Because, man... Was ever a comic book love story so hated? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like like you said, there's in a sense there's no reason why they shouldn't get it together. But man, when they finally did, how pissed off was the readership? I mean, they were just. I I mean, this is. A, a couple of years ago. I don't even remember how long ago it was. It wasn't that long ago. And, man, I remember the reaction being really negative. Correct me if I'm wrong. But people didn't like that idea. No. No, it was, pretty, it was pretty negative, yeah. I mean, nobody... I don't think anybody knew how many fans Lois Lane had until they did that. Yeah, just left her out there. Yeah, just pretended that none of that had happened or that they just sort of quietly broke up and after 50 years and went their separate ways, whatever. I don't know, but man. That was during the new 52 run, was it not? Yep. I thought so, yeah. Because that, that was a an issue that flew off the shelves. When it first came out, you could not find a copy anywhere. And it was going for high dollar. Which is weird, because so many people seem to just be hate-reading it. You wouldn't have thought, but... I don't know. People wanted to buy one to read and one to burn, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I think the aerial embrace just attracted people. That were the aerial embrace on the cover. Oh, sure. But see, the problem there is that that evokes images of the Chris Reeve Superman movie, which is loved by the fandom. And so, eh, yeah. People, you look, people look at that and said, no, that should be Lois doing that. That's not right. I don't know. 
I thought the reaction was a little much at the time, but people really didn't seem to like that too much. Yep. I think you're right. Yep. Okay, Les, you have another one? Yes. Uh, I think I'm going to go with the Martian Manhunter and Chocos. <laughs> okay. There was, he adored the cookies, which were essentially Oreos or High Rocks, whichever you want to look at. But it was evident in the comics, mainly the Justice League comics, and it was even carried over into Smallville when he appeared on that show. I remember Clark being in the barn of the camp farm and finding chocolate chair, chocolate cookies lying there on one of the uh, tables or something. And it, when I first saw it, I started laughing because I knew exactly what was going on, who was involved. The character of the Martian Manhunter had not been introduced, but for people that read the comics, it was a an instant giveaway. You knew exactly what was going on. Okay, cool. So I guess it's my turn. And I'm actually going real real world this time. Uh, a couple. I may uh, solicit a couple Oz here. Amanda Connor and Jimmy Palmiotti. Uh, ah. <laughs> ah. Um, Damn it. You okay? I picked them too. Okay, they cool. Were my, they were my next pick. <laughs> okay, awesome. <laughs> um, it just, you know, they work so well together and you could if you follow them on social media you know you can know how much they love each other and it's kind of hard not to have a soft spot for them um i have not had a chance to meet amanda because she's always busy but uh jimmy's a hell of a guy i would i I think less and i have talked a couple times about him being one of those guys that you could just say hey you want to have a beer and let's go sit down and just chit chat for about four or five hours and he would be willing to do that if he can and i'm sure she's just as as as, as cool as that as well so it's kind of hard not to pull for them but they're pretty awesome i will agree clearly i, I know so my too. cat is on his list but i gotta agree too yep clearly i think so too because like i said they were my next, <laughs> they were my next choice <laughs> Awesome. Okay, so any other picks? Other couples? I do, yeah. Okay. Where do we go? Um, one of my favorites was Ralph and Sue Dibney, and that ended tragically in the one of the Crisis books. Uh, you've also got the two archers, and their bird girlfriends from Marvel and DC. But I guess I'm going out, way out on this one, Andy Cap and Flo. The comic strip just made me laugh all the time. It was totally acerbic, but you could tell the two of them actually cared for one another, especially when her mother visited and she never appeared on strip. She would always just make her comments from the side. But you could tell that there were times where they were, uh, Flo and Andy were joined against Mother. <laughs> and in the, the Misses, as Andy called her, would just refer to her as the Misses. Okay. Some, inter- some cool picks there. I agree. Mike, you have any others? No, but that doesn't mean I won't come up with something. (laughs) You do another one. Let me see if I can come up with some. (laughs) What about Beast Boy and Terra? 
she became a, a traitor to the team, and he was totally crushed. Yeah, that's true. Um, if we want to go with an on again, off again, Batman and Catwoman. Yeah. They just there was always a tension between the two. They just ne- and yeah, and they just could never seem to make it work. They 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 always they were always distracted by other by outside forces. Well, plus the fact that she would never truly. Uh, Give up crime. Yeah. So mm-hmm. there was always that. Yeah, that's a that's a good one. Okay. There's some really cool picks there. Uh, any final thoughts before we move on? No, nope. clearly we're just a bunch of big old softies. Yeah. At least for this week. Mm-hmm. So, happy Valentine's Day to everybody out there. And when we come back, our weekly picks. And we're back. It's time for our weekly picks. And I lead off this time. For my first choice, I'm going with DC. And it is Super Sons number one, written by Peter Tomasi and art by Jorge Jimenez. Uh, I've been waiting for this book for a while. This is uh, this is uh, going to be uh, Damian Wayne as Robin and John Kent as Superboy. Although he isn't really he hasn't really taken to the name yet. But um, the the little prologue in the two issues of Superman has me very excited about this series because it's going to be a, literally a oil and water combination. Uh, you have John, literally the Boy Scout, and of course Damien being the son of Batman and the grandson of Ray Al Ghul. He, he's pompous and he's arrogant and all that, so it's it's going to be interesting it's an interesting dynamic, so it should be a lot of fun. Especially with Damien's attitude of entitlement. Pretty much. And that he that he that he's the leader, he knows it all and all, all of that, and you should just, just listen to me and do what I'm saying. So yep. Yes. Yeah, that'll go over well. Mm-hmm. Alrighty, Mikey. Alrighty, my first pick is an image book. It is Manifest Destiny number 26. Um, I've talked about this series before. It is really cool. Um, and it is it's another historical-esque book. The overall premise is um, we are following the Lewis and Clark expedition into the Northwest Territory. Um but there's a lot more weird shit out there than any of the history books ever told us about. Um, the, some of the stuff is downright supernatural, in fact. Um, and at, in this arc, the the crew has hunkered down for the winter, um, and so it's it's setting up beautifully for one of those closed room horror story type things where all kinds of weird stuff's going on outside and the men are just are in in their little fortification that they've built just kind of freaking out and we're totally setting up for one of those and it looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun cool seems like uh it's been on a break or have i just missed seeing the title um this is i if i remember correctly this is the second issue of this arc and there was a break before that okay it was okay. a few months anyway. So, yeah. Yeah, this has been an interesting book. Uh, Les? With my first pick, I'm going with Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency, The Salmon of Doubt, number five. This is an IDW uh, publication. Arvind Ethan David is the writer. The artist is Ilias Kira Zias. And 
once again, this is based on the Douglas Adams books for a start. And in this issue, Dirk uh, may have more than one past. And uh, it's probably, those pasts are probably going to overtake him now. In this storyline, you are introduced to, obviously, characters from the book, and it is expanded to include characters from the current BBC television series. It's been a, an interesting read, because the TV series, I believe we've discussed before, and it is tough to describe. <laughs> it, it's so unusual that I can't even start as to what you would be watching. Uh, it's, an, it's a TV show that you probably would have to watch two or three times to get everything. That's the way this book series is, too. The books are similar by Adams, but the convoluted ideas that come out of it are really funny, but really thought-provoking. And the, like I said, the comic book has carried this out, too. Cool. Mm -hmm. I hadn't checked out the TV show. I guess I'm going to need to do that. I it's well either. worth the time. I haven't either. And my experience with previous Dirk Gently comics has been spotty. Then again, I was a fan of the Douglas Adams books, so yeah, it, it had a high. They had a high bar to to, to reach. Yeah. True. Yeah, I'm glad to hear they're doing well this time. Yep. For my second pick, uh, it's from Boone Studios. It is Jim Henson's Power of the Dark Crystal, uh, written by Simon Spurrier, with art by Nicole Matthews. And this is uh, the official sequel to the movie, which uh, came out 35 years ago. So this is uh, this year marks its 35th anniversary. And I don't think there's really been a lot of Dark Crystal comics. Uh, I mean, I know there was adaptation a long, long time ago, and there's been some some stuff. Yeah, I think they but did I, one, I want to say within the last year or two. That okay. Put it out, but I don't remember a whole lot before that. Right. So I, I would be curious, since this is listed as the official sequel to the to the film. So, that would be interesting. Yeah, sounds like a good team, too. Yeah, definitely a good team. Uh, Mikey. All righty. Um, I'm going with an IDW trade for my second pick. Um, the trade for Jackboot and Iron Heel comes out this week. Um, and if you – I actually think I mentioned this when it was – when it was – when the floppies were coming out um, – if you can get behind a hooligan soccer player um, getting drafted in World War II, a hooligan British soccer player getting drafted into the army, into the Air Force in World War II, the RAF, um, and getting shot down and thrown into a Nazi prison castle thing, and there being interesting supernatural horror going on, um, then this is the book for you. If that's a little too specific, sorry, but it's <laughs> it's it's a it's a really fun little like I said supernatural horror story, and I, I definitely recommend it. Sounds pretty cool. Uh, I didn't I didn't check it out when it was coming out as floppy, so I'll I'll definitely check this out if it's all all together. It does sound cool, and if it's all, I crack it up to be right. <laughs> Well, there's not a lot of World War II and, and supernatural stuff you usually combine. There's not a lot of that. But, uh, which more is, of it now than... Which is weird, given the Nazi obsession with the supernatural. But yeah. that's a different show, probably. Yeah. 
That may be something we can look at another day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Les. Well, okay. For the having the last for last here, I'm looking at a a uh, comic book that is returning after a decade, more than a decade, probably a fifteen years probably closer to 20 years. This is Starstruck. And Starstruck started out as a stage play in 1980. It was adapted in comic book form, and it has been published by a multitude of uh, publishing companies. The premise is you have uh, a leader, or the, the male lead is Harry Palmer, who starts out as a, or in the series, he starts out as a, uh, a bartender, but he is actually a soldier in a, an army. From this, you have the, the evolution of the story, and it is really good stuff. The issue that I'm speaking of is Starstruck, Old Pearl Jews, Never Die. It's number one of six. IDW is putting this out. And for this, they have brought back the original writer, Elaine Lee, and the original artist, Mike Kaluta. In it, uh, you have a, uh, let's see, what am I thinking of? A, uh, oh, I'm sorry, a remarked, and uh, up, or expanded series where they've taken the original run, they've added material to it with about 50% new material, all new material going into this. You do meet Harry Palmer, you do meet the Galactic Girl Guides, which I thought was one of the best parts of it. And the themes of the, the stories are were great because you had you covered feminism, uh, satire, absurdism, so among others, which I highly recommend. Now, if you wish, you, you can go to the to the uh, Wikipedia and look up Starstruck. And it will give you a complete rundown. It is a lengthy article talking about the play, the comics, the possibility of a movie or a series made from it. And I'm, I'm happy to see this return because it was a joy the first time around. I'm going to like it even more because they are expanding it and adding, like I said, 50% more artwork and probably the the writing will be changed to adapt that cool cool it's like the extended edition version mm -hmm. like the lord of the rings movies yep could be interesting it could be uh for my honorable mention uh i go back to dc and it is a, a hardcover collection called batgirl a celebration of 50 years and yes, uh, 2017 marks the 50th anniversary of the Barbara Gordon Batgirl, uh, who showed up in Detective Comics just before she showed up on the Batman TV series. So, uh, it was written, uh, the stories are written by, uh, I think it's going to be more than just Gardner Fox. They only list Gardner Fox with art by Carmine Infantino. I would think it's going to be, uh, I would think they would have stories. Well, I guess not. It may be all just a Barbara Gordon if they're only doing 50 years, because if they would cover the other Batgirls, they would actually go back to the original Betty Kane one back in the 50s. So it may be just all Barbara Gordon ones. So, But uh, I definitely want to check that out. Cool. I think I probably will, too. Yep. Mikey, your honorable mention. My honorable mention is a Dark Horse book. It is Lady Killer, 
to issue number four. This is a little bit late. Um, issue three came out in November, and so this, it's been a bit delayed, but it's finally coming out. I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited. I like this book a lot. I wonder if the delay was due to her doing the art for DC as well, because Supergirl being super came out in December. So I just wonder if there may be a little bit, or, or maybe something else. I don't know. But Lady Killer is awesome, awesome book. And, and I'm waiting for this issue, too. It's, I agree, it's way too long. So. All righty, uh, last your honorable mention. My honorable mention is a graphic novel called Wicked Powered. This is a webcomic collected by uh, Keen Spot. The creators are Chris Crosby and Owen Gianni. And in this one, your main character, Willie Schlub, is a laser fanatic, but he opens the story with, one day I woke up and there are three gorgeous women lying beside me. The women are called Pulse, Jewel, and UV. And through this series, which has been running three times a week for, I think it's just over 10 years, they're doing a collection of this series. And, uh, but it deals with uh, Wiley being changed, uh, having a sex change, Wiley being tossed back and forth in time, and it is very amusing. I read several pages of it, and it is some really good stuff, pretty solid story. So I'm looking forward to this run, see what happens. Cool. Very cool. All righty. Good picks all around, of course. Let's go ahead and get into our shout-outs. Uh, as always, we want to shout-out to Manny the Martyr for the music for our little little show. Great group of guys, uh, awesome musicians. You ought to go check out their page. You'll find a link in our show notes, or you can go to uh, our podcast page on www.thefellowshipofgeeks.net. And we'll have a link. You can just click on their logo, and I'll take you to their page. Uh, thank you a lot, guys. It's very much appreciated. Uh, secondly, I want to uh, thank Potter and Family, hashtag Potter and Family, on Twitter for the support. For those who, of you who are not familiar w- with this, uh, Potter and Family, it is a group of podcasters who promote other shows by just retweeting. If, if they if they put in the hashtag Potter Family, and they have been kind enough to uh, retweet our shows, and we've we've been doing our best to return said love. Any particular show we need to shout out this week, Mikey? Um, sure. I'll throw one in there. Um, All right. And in the, keeping in keeping with the Valentine's Day theme, I will shout out the Super PP Time podcast. All righty. Okay, that was my own <laughs> little joke. That's uh, they don't really have anything to do with Valentine's Day, but I couldn't resist. Um, what <laughs> what they are is um, I don't know. I think the best way to describe them would be a surrealist comedy podcast. Um, they. Uh, as far as I can tell, these there's two guys and they uh, they do different voices and they actually do some of them through technology, but that's all right. It's still still funny as hell. Um, and they will improv like honestly, just like random word choices to to fit into they'll, into whatever sentence they're talking about. They'll just stop and grab a random word out of nowhere, and it's it's one of those things that you pretty much have to experience to get it. 
I can describe it to you and it will not make any sense whatsoever and it won't sound funny at all and then by the time you listen to it 15 minutes in you'll be laughing your ass off um, so check out the Super PP Time podcast alrighty definitely like the name <laughs> oh yeah I'm sorry you um, had me in shock when you gave that name. <laughs> I know. I'm going to have to put the explicit tag on the show now, huh? Oh, no. <laughs> and finally, shout out to you, dear, dear listener. Thank you for downloading this episode and previous episodes. Thank you for listening. We really appreciate it. Uh, we always value your input. We want uh, feedback. Please, you know, if you got any questions, suggestions, comments, concerns, we're always open to listen to them and, and responding kind. Uh, the best way to contact us is uh, either via email, email at the fellowship of the geeks dot net, or you can go to our about us page on on the website www.thefellowshipofthegeeks.net, dot net, and there's a form that you can fill out there. Uh, and of course, we are on social media. You can find us on Facebook, The Fellowship of the Geeks. Feel free to like us, and uh, you can send us a message that way, or or just post and say, "Hey, think you have a pretty cool show," and whatever. Obviously, we're on Twitter at Fellowship Geeks. Feel free to follow us and let us know what you think. Uh, Mikey has his own personal Twitter account. At Mikey Geek, and I have one as well. At Tom TC Geek, feel free to follow us. And if you like to, just just do a shout out. Say hey, and we'll say hey back. Thanks for following us. We will do that. And wherever you download our episodes, whether it's iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or you listen to us on YouTube, uh, please please rate us. Whether it's the stars or thumbs up or whatever grading format there is. We would appreciate it if you'd rate us. And if you have extra uh, couple of minutes, uh, go ahead and give us a review. We would definitely appreciate it. Uh, did I leave anything out? Um, not that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, if you need some help for something to throw out at us on social media, um, throw at us either your favorite romance comic or just your favorite comic book couple. There you go. go we can do that. The theme of the show. That actually does go with the theme of the show, not like the super PV time thing. Um, right. And also, we are still on the hunt for questions for a Q&A episode that we're going to do soon. So if you do have a question that you want us to answer on the show, fire yeah. it at us. Yeah, any of those methods we just mentioned. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me of the questions. Yes. Any final thoughts before we say good night? Just thanks, everybody. Yes, just thanks, everybody, and hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Thank you, everybody, for listening. I uh, hope you enjoyed it as much as we do. We love you guys. So until next time. Read more comics and support your local stores. We thank you for listening to the show. Comments, suggestions, and questions can be sent to email at thefellowshipofthegeeks.net. You can follow us on Facebook at The Fellowship of the Geeks and on Twitter at Fellowship Geeks. Until next time, 